Remember the scene from Old Yeller, where Yeller is kept in a wooden pen and was acting super angry? When I was a kid, I didn't understand why such a caring canine like Yeller would suddenly turn angry or vicious, or why Travis had to put him down. As an adult, I understand it was due to the fact that Yeller was bitten by a rabies-infected wolf and was transmitted the disease. But what is rabies and how does rabies cause such a dramatic tr change in animals or potentially humans if they are infected? First, I think we need to discuss zoonotic diseases such as rabies and what they are. A zoonotic disease is a disease that can be naturally transmitted to humans. Examples can include HIV, which was transmitted to humans in the late 19th or early, early 20th century, or influenza, which can be passed via pathogens. A direct zoonotic disease is a disease that is directly transmitted from animals to humans through media such as air or through bites and saliva. Alternatively, a zoonotic disease that is transferred from a human to an animal is called reverse zoonosis. Rabies, which is classified as a zoonotic disease, is contracted through bites, saliva, or scratches. It is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brains of humans and mammals. Signs of this disease can include uncontrolled excitement, an inability to move parts of the body, confusion, violent movements, and loss of consciousness. It is important to note that once an animal or human contracts the rabies virus, the probable outcome is death. Generally, canine-specific rabies does not circulate among dogs, but can become infected from other wildlife. Rabies is common among wild animals such as raccoons, skunks, foxes, and bats. In Saskatchewan, rabies is most prevalent in skunks or in some rare cases, bats. Once an animal or human are bitten or scratched, there are three stages to the rabies virus. The first stage is called the predormal stage, which can last one to three days. It is characterized by behavior changes. For a dog, unusual shyness or aggression that they normally do not show may become apparent. Additionally, a characteristic change in tone with an animal's voice box can be heard. This is because the rabies virus attacks the voice box and throat. The second stage, called the excitative stage, or often called furious rabies stage, is when the infected animal will be hyper-reactive to external stimuli and will bite at anything near. Sounds and movement can agitate the pet that is infected and they may start attacking inanimate objects. During this stage, something called the bone and throat symptom may appear. Since the animal is a losing ability to swallow, it will make the animal feel as if they have something lodged in their throat. They will try to dislodge the invisible object. During the second stage, the animal will start to become dehydrated and want to drink water. Unfortunately, due to hydrophobia, they are unable to swallow any water that they are trying to ingest and will start to choke and vomit. The third stage is called the paralytic stage. As the name suggests, in this stage, the damage caused by the virus to the motor neurons can cause incoordination, drooling or foaming at the mouth, and difficulty swelling due to paralysis of facial and throat muscles. This is characterized by the animal displaying a drop jaw or paralysis of their tongue. Death is usually caused by respiratory arrest. Around the world, one human passes away from rabies once every 10 minutes. But how do we prevent such a debilitating disease from infecting our beloved animals and ourselves? First steps in prevention is to ensure that your pet's rabies vaccinations are up to date. Second is to maintain control and supervise your pets. And lastly is to spay or neuter your pets to ensure that animal visitors to your property are kept to a minimum as these animals may not be properly cared for or vaccinated regularly. Additionally, it is important that you contact your local animal control to remove any stray animals from your neighborhood, as you will not know if these animals may be unvaccinated or ill. For humans, it is important for someone who has been bitten or scratched to seek immediate medical attention, as rabies is 100% preventable with appropriate medical care. 
Treatment after exposure can prevent the disease if administered promptly, generally within 10 days of infection. In this situation where an animal or human is bitten by a wild animal that has rabies, is there a treatment available for rabies infection? When an unvaccinated pet is bitten or scratched by a wild animal, it is important for the owner to provide the animal that bit the pet. Unfortunately, if these animals cannot be produced, public health officials may recommend that the unvaccinated pet be euthanized immediately. If an owner is unwilling to have this done, the animal should be placed in strict isolation for six months and vaccinated one month before being released. Dogs or cats that are currently vaccinated will be kept under observation for 45 days. During this time, their behavior and health are observed. In the situation that neurological symptoms present themselves, there's no cure for the animal. Humans who have been exposed to a rabbit animal should be given a vaccination and a globulin or antibody injection to protect them against being infected. If a human does not seek immediate vaccination and the onset of neurological symptoms start to transpire, then health officials can place the patient into an induced coma, a procedure called the Milwaukee Protocol. The induced coma, in theory, will temporarily halt brain function that would protect the brain from damage while giving the immune system time to defeat the virus. While in a coma, the patient is administered ketamine, Midazolam, Rivivirin, and Amantadine. The Milwaukee Protocol procedure, however, has only saved 5 out of 43 patients that it has been performed on. So that basically means that 11% of patients have survived this disease. Ultimately, when it comes to rabies, it is important to remember that your pets are always receiving their vaccinations and that humans are receiving immediate medical attention for any scratches or bites caused by wild animals. Give a wild animal lots of space and admire from a distance while ensuring your pet is under your direct supervision. Unfortunately, the vaccines for rabies wasn't around the time that Old Yeller was bitten, but in the modern age, Yeller may not have contracted this disease and would have been able to live out his days with Travis's family.